Hey, Walter Sorrells back with my beginner's guide to IDPA. Today, the rules. Stand by. So this book right here is the book of rules of IDPA. As you can see, a lot of pages, obviously a lot of rules here. Just for instance, rule 6.22 cardboard targets at 10 yards, 9.1 meters or less from the shooter must present a portion of the upper or lower down zero zone. You get the point. A lot of rules here. I'm just going to be working on kind of a broad brush basis here to give you, you know, in five minutes or so, the real, real nitty gritty basics of IDPA rules. Moreover, periodically the rules are changed. Scoring, for instance, is supposed to change over the course of the next year. By the time you watch this, some of these rules may be slightly different. That said, the basic idea of IDPA doesn't really change. What you're trying to do is mimic, in a sporting context, within reason, the principles and skills you'd need to employ in an actual gunfight. This obviously has a lot of caveats, but that's the intent and that's what the rules are for. I've talked about the safety rules earlier, so in this video I'll focus on scoring and basic procedural issues. All recorded with this gizmo right here, a shot timer, which is carried by the safety officer. Let's start with scoring. The basis of your score in IDPA is the amount of time that it takes from the time that the buzzer goes off until the moment that you break your last shot. That's known as your raw time. That time is adjusted based on accuracy. Here's how that works. This is a standard IDPA target. You're trying to shoot it in either the head or the heart lung area. Shots anywhere else on the target will result in time being added to your score. So these two areas are assigned zero points. The surrounding area is one point, then the peripheral area is three points, and a clean miss is five points. In IDPA jargon, these are referred to as down zero, down one, down three, and so forth. There's a required number of shots on a target in any given course of fire, usually two or three. Under normal circumstances, you can shoot all you want and your best two shots count. So as you're blasting away, maybe you get better shots, but you eat up clock. So you lose one as you gain the other. That's the game. Good guys shoot as fast as they can shoot accurately and no faster. Typical rookie mistake is to try and shoot as fast as people who can shoot accurately at a higher rate of speed. Your accuracy falls away and you have tons and tons of points down. So here's how that works. Your points down for a target are added up, then divided by two. That number is then added to your raw time. The current plan in IDPA is that the divided by two thing will go away and points down will be simply added one for one to your time. At my range, we tried scoring a number of matches using both methods, the old and the new, and it didn't make a bit of difference in the results. The best guys won, the worst guys lost, and it rarely even switched people one or two positions up or down. So a little procedural issue, this is my finger. Uh, when you see a safety officer do that right there, that means you've gotten a penalty, also referred to as a PE or procedural error. It's like throwing a flag in football. So the basic idea of IDPA is to move and shoot or hide and shoot. So some targets in a given course of fire will be specified as having to be shot on the move. And this means just what it sounds like. You have to be walking while you shoot them. Likewise, some have to be shot from cover. In IDPA, this means that 100% of your lower body and 50% of your upper body must be behind cover with respect to whichever target you're shooting. In layman's terms, 
if the guy you're shooting can see your foot, you're out of cover. Now normally when you hit a barricade or some other form of cover, you're going to hit the outermost target and then work your way in. This is called slicing the pie. The theory is pretty obvious. You want to shoot the first guy who would shoot back at you. So you just hit that outside guy, pie your way in. So what happens if you don't shoot a target the way you're supposed to? Let's say you're out of cover, or you're not moving when you're supposed to be moving, or you shoot them out of order. You shoot the innermost target and don't slice the pie. The SO lifts his finger, the scorer puts a tick mark on your score sheet, and you get a penalty or PE. A penalty adds three seconds to your time. Simple as that. There are a gazillion things you can get penalized for in IDPA. You can't leave a position of cover with an empty gun. You can't shoot extra rounds in a standard stage. You have to engage all specified targets in the specified way. Endless numbers of things. Read the rules at IDPA.com for the entire list of ways you can screw up and get penalized. A couple of additional important penalties. Meet Grandma. She's a sweet old lady. She's holding her hands up. Oh no, don't shoot Grandma. Oh, you shot Grandma. That's five seconds. You shot her again, five more seconds. Every time you shoot a non-threat target, five seconds. Also, with each target, in most situations, you must put at least one round in either the zero or one point sections of the target. If you don't, you get a special penalty called a failure to neutralize or FTN. That's five seconds too. There's no more dread thing to hear in an IDPA match than having a scorer call out 10 and a fail. That means you got 10 points down plus a five second penalty, plus possibly a three second penalty for failing to engage a target. Disastrous. There's also a penalty called a failure to do right, or FTDR, which was invented exclusively for people to make jokes about, because in the entire history of IDPA, no one's ever gotten one. I mean, maybe they have, but I've never seen it, and neither has anybody I've ever talked to. But if they ever do give somebody an FTDR, it'll be a 20 second penalty. So let's tally up an actual stage. So let's say for the sake of example, it took 10 seconds to shoot this one target. So your time for the entire stage is 10 seconds. Let's say for the sake of argument that we've only got one target and you're required to shoot it two times. So you put three shots on it, one in the zero and two in the down three zone. So only the best two shots are going to count which means the zero counts, and then one of the threes. The third shot is disregarded. That means you're three points down for the target. You divide that by two. That gives you 1.5 seconds total down for the target. for a total of 11.5 seconds. Now let's say you got a penalty. That's going to add another three seconds to your time. So the total for the stage is 14.5 seconds. So let's talk ammo. Every division has a specified number of rounds per magazine, also known as division capacity. The intent is to keep an even playing field from gun to gun. You don't just stuff your gun full. That way it would become an arms race to who can carry the biggest magazine. So in SSP and ESP, it's 10 rounds. CDP and CCP, it's eight. Revolvers, six. You actually get to load division capacity plus one in your first load just to confuse newbies. Then the additional mags are all division capacity, i.e. 10, 8, whatever. Obviously, if the most rounds you can have in a gun is 11 rounds and most stages require, say, 12 to 18 rounds, you'll need to reload at some point during course of fire. 
In IDPA, you typically load when you hit slide lock. Dump your empty mag on the ground, slam in a new one, drop the slide, keep shooting. But if you're behind cover, you can also do a tactical reload, which is referred to in the rule book as an LCCR. In IDPA, if you're behind cover, you can unload your gun and top it up with a full magazine. But you have to retain the mag if any bullets remain in the mag or the gun. There are a lot of arcane rules about ammo management, which I won't burden you with. Expect to get some penalties on this front until you figure them all out. So as I indicated earlier, there are a lot of rules in IDPA. Some of them are very nitpicky, but there they are. We're just trying to keep it nice and short here, so I'm gonna quit at this point. Next up in our series, how to thrive in IDPA. We're gonna talk about basic techniques, grip, stance, reloads, movement, and some other stuff. Um, I'll be doing those videos at a later date. So if you're watching this right after I posted this video, you may have to wait a little while to see those, uh, but I will put a link right up here when that's up. So just a little wrap up here, you know, I hope that if you've been given some thought to shooting IDPA, uh, this will spur you on to go out there and give it a whirl. It really is fun. Um, it's easy to get kind of intimidated or overwhelmed by the rules and the fact that you're going to run into a lot of guys who really are quite good at the sport and been doing it for a long time. Maybe you don't know anybody who does it. The sport's very friendly, really uh, enthusiastic about new shooters as a rule and uh, really welcoming to new shooters. And uh, so go out there and give it a shot.